Women played a critical role in the OSS and made up one third of its personnel. For too long, their heroic efforts have gone unheralded. The purpose of the Virginia Hall Award is to recognize the contributions made by women to the U.S. intelligence community and U.S. Special Operations Forces from World War II to the present. In 1936, a hunting accident derailed Virginia Hall's plan of joining the Foreign Service when part of her lower left leg had to be amputated. In 1941, while in London, Britain's Special Operations Executive, the British counterpart to OSS, sent Hall to Paris to help the French resistance. Posing as a correspondent for the New York Post, she helped downed flyers escape, provided courier services, and obtained supplies for clandestine presses and forgers for more than a year. Hall caused so much trouble for the Nazis that Gestapo flyers stated, the woman who limps is one of the most dangerous allied agents in France. We must find and destroy her. In 1942, Nazis seized full control of France and Hall barely escaped to Spain by walking across the snow-covered Pyrenees on her wooden prosthetic leg. In 1944, Hall joined the Office of Strategic Services in order to return to France. Disguised as an elderly female farmhand, Hall organized sabotage operations, supported resistance groups as a radio operator and courier, mapped drop zones, helped sabotage German military movements, and trained three battalions of resistance forces to wage guerrilla warfare. For her efforts in France, OSS Chief General William Donovan personally awarded Hall a Distinguished Service Cross, the only one awarded to a civilian woman during World War II. Our inaugural Virginia Hall Award recipient, Major Stephanie Check Rader, exemplifies the OSS spirit of the award's namesake. Stephanie Check Rader was working in New York City when World War II broke out. I was in New York. That's all they talked about is the war. We were getting ready for World War II. And then they came up with the fact that they were going to have a Women's Army Corps. And I volunteered. Women came in from all over the country. 3,000 women that wanted to get into the service. Well, they took 800 and I was one of the 800. There was a wonderful bunch of women, all highly educated. You had to have an education to become an officer. We, had, we went directly into Fort Des Moines into officer training, and then we trained officers. I had a master's degree in chemistry from Cornell University. I'm a Cornell graduate. Recognizing America's lack of a centralized intelligence service, President Roosevelt founded the OSS and put William J. Donovan in charge of it. General Donovan immediately started looking for qualified people to join America's first intelligence agency. They were interested in anybody who had a language. And you see, I speak Polish. They were looking for people like that and down in Washington. And I got a job immediately. They said, you're going to go to Warsaw, but you're going to go underground. I went to, to Poland with the embassy, but I wasn't really working for the embassy. I answered to the intelligence group. When Captain Czech got to Poland, she was shocked at the destruction the war had caused. The Germans, when they backed out, they destroyed it. The Russians did too. You'd be walking down the street, and the whole city was a rubble. Somebody be coming out of a hole. They were living in the basement of some house where there was no house above it. And there are people from Russia, people from all countries. They're in there. They had their little groups. You had to be very careful who you talked to because they were your buddy and they, they were take, trying to figure out who you were and what you did. See, I was with OSS. But they didn't know that I said I was with the American Embassy. And we traveled around, around Poland because we got a car. 
So we were able to collect all kinds of information. And they gave me a gun, but I never carried a gun. I wouldn't know what the heck I was going to do with a dumb gun. Traveling in civilian clothes that afforded her no protection if captured, Captain Czech obtained first-hand information on Russian troop concentrations, the activities of the Polish and Russian security services, and gathered economic and political data. She made a second trip to southern Poland, where a U.S. naval attaché had disappeared only a few days earlier, never to be seen again. The Russians would, if you were moving around that country, somebody was watching you. They were Polish, but they were pro-Russian. You know, there was a lot of that going on. There were people from all over Europe there. They were going through one way or another. Germans, French, Polish. The more languages you know, the better off you were. I had a little bit of French and Polish I knew well. So I had a lot of information. And I reported everything I knew to the embassy. The OSS representative, he collected information he was there undercover as an embassy worker, but, but he was OSS. On a trip to Berlin, Captain Czech carried sensitive documents to the OSS headquarters. While there, she was asked to bring documents back to Poland. They gave me the documents in Berlin, and I was going back to Warsaw. And they said, take these. I said, I don't want to carry that stuff. You said, well, there's nobody else going. You got to take them. So I had him with me. Unfortunately for Captain Czech, the Russian security service was waiting to arrest her when she returned from Germany. Only some quick thinking kept her from disappearing. In the nick of time, I slipped them over to somebody that was walking next to me. I said, take these and give them to so-and-so. So I got rid of them. And it's a good thing because then I got picked up by the Russians. And I said, oh my God. The Russians said they were on our side, but it was very cagey. You were afraid that somebody's going to pick something up on you and they'll wish you off to Siberia. You disappear. I lost a lot of friends. They take them away and you never see them again. Despite her cover being blown through no fault of her own and the great danger this posed to her safety, Captain Czech insisted on staying in Poland and completing her mission. The OSS Society is honored to present Stephanie Czech Rader with the first Virginia Hall Award.